Meanwhile, we continue to accrue debt like, wow, like like it doesn't matter. Well, I guess it doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> it doesn't. It, it just doesn't matter to anybody. The debt is expected to pass $78 trillion by 2028. Okay, that's eight years from now. $78 trillion? Oof. Uh, of course, the pandemic has pushed the government into a corner and uh, has helped it excuse itself to borrow heavily from the future to ward off a serious threat right now. Without this inter- intervention, the U.S. economy would be in a much worse recession, possibly even depression. But eventually, you know, the chickens are coming home to roost. It's going to happen eventually. Even though borrowing excessively may have may have been the lesser of the two evils, the burgeoning debt will have ramifications in the future. No. With the debt approaching $27 trillion right now, $27 trillion, and projected to rise to $78 trillion by 2028, it will present significant challenges. How has the national debt changed during the past presidential administrations? Uh, how will a Biden or Trump win impact the future? And how I, I don't think it'll affect it at all. It'll just keep going the same direction. Mm-hmm. Well, until because, we make those platinum coins. Right. Pay it off. Yeah. But barring that, Republicans and Democrats just act the same now on the debt. Then nobody cares about it. Spending debt, nah, whatever. Don't worry about it. There's one person I think in office who cares about it. And his name is Rand Paul. The national debt has been a routine part of the federal budget uh, since Nixon abandoned the gold standard in 71. Good move, uh, Dick. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really, really good move by him. Yeah. Once the gold standard was removed, the shackles fell away from Congress, um, and they could vote to establish new higher credit limits every time they needed, and that's what they do. And if you don't go along with them, you get pummeled, you get bludgeoned, and you lose your election, and... Or you lose your place. They don't. They don't put you on committees. They find a way to punish you, and then of course, uh, your opponent uses that against you that you're not bringing home the bacon for your for your district or your state, and then you're just done. So it's worked out really well. <laughs> I mean, it's just it's absolutely amazing to see, and they've got a bunch of charts in the story showing the growth of the debt up to Nixon, uh, and then Reagan. And then Clinton, and then it just spirals out of control. It took us from George Washington to Ronald Reagan to get to a trillion dollars. And now look where we are. (laughs) Now look where we are. Now we do a trillion dollars in one bill or or one executive order. Uh, Easily could spend a trillion dollars in a day. Easily. (laughs) It's really... Kind of staggering uh, when you think about it. So you know what? Nobody thinks about it. Don't think about it. That's all. That's all. There's a good. There's a good solution to it. Just don't think about it. Problem solved. Goes away just like that. So (laughs) (laughs) we can, you know, we can focus on other things like uh, the fire tornado. (laughs) Yeah, we were speaking about the debt a few minutes ago when Jimmy Carter took office. So 1976. The debt was six hundred sixty nine point two billion. God, that sounds like pocket change now, doesn't it? Wow. Six hundred sixty nine point two billion. Four years later, nine hundred and sixty four and a half billion. Debt increased one point seven seven trillion during uh, President Reagan's two terms. One point four trillion under the elder Bush. One and a half trillion under Clinton, and five point three trillion under W. So five point three trillion. Because we're in, you know, the middle of, is it 36, 37 wars? I'm not sure. It's <laughs> kind of lost count. Yeah, it depends on how you count them. But they cost us some money. <laughs> yep. $8.7 trillion is what it went up during the Obama presidency. And $3.3 trillion under President Trump so far. That sounds a little light. $3.3 trillion? I thought we, I mean, we've spent that in about the last two months. Mm. So, anyway, it just goes to show you that for the first 200 years of existence... We racked up a debt of $669 billion. And the last little while, <laughs> jeez, uh, in the last 40 years, yeah. okay, we've 
we've spent an extra $27 trillion. Wow. That's grotesque. Wow. Yeah, it, it is. And, and again, the biggest problem is that nobody cares anymore. Mm. Nobody even gives it lip service other than the one suspect that we can always talk about, Rand Paul. And Thomas Massey. And Thomas Massey. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Thomas Massey has actually brought it up, and he gets bludgeoned for bringing it up every time he does. Precisely. He gets called names. He's, he's, uh, he's just grandstanding. How do you, you know, when nobody cares, that's not a grandstand. I know, right? He's so promoting. No, he's not. Nobody cares. I mean, when you're talking about the debt, that is about the least sexy topic you can bring up for attention. (laughs) So if he wanted to get attention, he'd certainly do something else. But we don't listen to those guys. So nope, don't worry about it. And again, uh, the projection is in eight years, $78 trillion. Well, I mean, come on. You're done at that point. Seriously. You've you've devalued your dollar to the point where what is inflation going to be if that happens? I, 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 a thousand percent? Five thousand percent? I don't know, but it's it won't be good. So maybe we should get on these representatives and tell them, hey, we do care about this. Stop it. <laughs>